Gary Neville is considered one of the most respected Manchester United voices in terms of punditry. And after Jose Mourinho was sacked, Gary Neville was interviewed by Jeff Shreves on Sky Sports News. Now, in that interview, Neville speaks at length about what he feels Manchester United need to do between now and the end of the season and in the summer to fix the club's problems. And it's a really, really interesting conversation. So what I want to do is run through a few points that Neville had to make in that interview and have my own thoughts and opinions on top of Neville's. Now, you do the same in the comments as well. Now, before we get started, if you are new to United People's TV, please subscribe, join the community. It's getting bigger and bigger, and I love having you all involved. So make sure you subscribe if you are new. Let's get into it with the first point that Neville has to make about how United need to change how the club has operated for the last six or seven years. No, I, I think that this next six months are a critical period of planning and restructuring. I can't believe for one minute that the, um, the board, um, the owners are going to continue to operate the club off the pitch from a football point of view, the way in which they have been for the last six, seven years. Um, they need the best in class um, football leaders in that football club, and that's people who've done it at the best clubs in the world, at the best clubs in Europe, um, who have operated recruitment departments, who have looked at the technical side of the game, who have linked academy to first team. You know, Sir Alex Ferguson did that in himself. He linked the whole club as one, and that's not possible anymore. The club's too big. The club's huge. Neville isn't the first person to say this and he won't be the last either. I've been saying it for some time now to the point where it's kind of starting to sound repetitive. But Neville isn't wrong. It's absolutely the crux of the problem is Manchester United as a football club has operated horrifically in the last six or seven years because all eyes have been focused on the commercial aspect that's been brought over and polluted the football side of things. And because that's not split anymore with the right people doing the right jobs, Man United are an absolute mess. And Gary Neville was absolutely spot on here when he's saying that that needs to completely change. And a new structure does have to go in place, but what would Neville like to see at United? But on the football side, since Sir Alex left and David Gill left, there has been a huge void. And they tried to replace it with a similar structure, which is sort of CEO and manager. Um, and it's not unreasonable to continue to try that for the last five, six years. But I think now is the time to put what would be a more modern structure in place, head of football, sporting director, technical director, but the very best in class, the best recruitment people, the people who can get Manchester United ahead of the game. Manchester United are behind the game. You always feel like they're one step behind. You almost feel like they're chasing the player that someone else has spotted, rather than being the people who spot that player. And I always feel at the moment, they just feel like a level of naivety. Now, Gary, again, makes some very, very good points here. And I think the most prevalent one here is about recruitment because I feel United scouting has been wrong for some time. Remember David Moyes? I know, try not too hard to remember David Moyes, but he scouted, I remember it, William Carvalho, played for Sporting Lisbon I think at the time, I don't know whether he still does, scouted him for like 23 games in succession, then Moyes was sacked, then we didn't sign Carvalho. For a whole year we were scouting a player and we didn't sign him, I'm sure that happens at other clubs as well, but United's transfers over the last few years have just been hickledy pickledy. It's a madness and I think it does have to change. And you remember what Fergie did when he came into United back in the 80s. He did a massive overhaul of the scouting system, employed lots more local scouts and put an emphasis on that. And it started a big change at Manchester United. I don't think change of that scale is needed, but clearly the United's recruitment hasn't been spot on in the last few years. So that does have to change for whoever comes in next. And another interesting point here that Neville makes is how he, he wants the best in class. That's the best technical director possible, absolutely agree. Best sporting director, absolutely agree. The back of house recruitments have to be the best in class. And United have not done that in the last few years. I think it's been strange decisions, not tying up to the philosophy of the club, and that's created a bit of a mess that we now find ourselves in. But I think it's a point of debate as to whether we have to get the best in class in terms of the manager. Because if you look at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer right now, he's certainly not the best in class of a manager, but he's doing a fantastic job. And if he keeps that up until the end of the season, would Solskjaer get the job? Best in class would probably be Pochettino, but again, some people may say that he's never won a trophy in his career, which wouldn't be wrong. 
Who would be the best in class? Do we need the best in class manager? Was Mourinho the best in class manager before we got him and did that not work out? I think that's a bit of a point of debate from Neville there. But one thing Neville really is keen to see back at the club is a level of hierarchy in the management, in the whole back end of the club. And I think he's right about that. I think I've got a problem that the coach of a football club has, to be fair, tells the owners what structure they should deploy above him. So that's what I'm saying, there's a lack of control. So my point is, if they had to get rid of Jose Mourinho to employ a sporting director, that's fine, no problem. But the idea that they were being stopped in the first place, restructuring the football club by a manager, to be fair, is a nonsense. I think this point sums up the problems at United. You've got people managing upwards. And by that I mean Ed Woodward acting up and above himself, going over Mourinho and saying, no, you're not going to sign out of RL, you're not going to sign Maguire, I'm in charge of transfers but he's not the footballing director. You've got Mourinho who's then trying to manage above himself as well and that's caused the clash and the fallout with the board that has happened. So too many people are trying to do the job that isn't theirs at Manchester United and that's because of the lack of structure behind the scenes. We clearly define roles and clearly define people in certain positions, that won't happen. So all of these problems will change with the right structure in place and Neville's very, very right to point that out. But I think the best point that Neville makes throughout this interview with Jess Shreves is his idea on transfers and how managers have been driving transfers at Manchester United rather than the club itself. You need to make sure that money, the, I'm sure the owners are looking at it thinking they want, they want their money invested wisely and protecting. So you have to employ the best people to go and get the players for you, to go and get this ahead of the game. And this moment in time, Manchester United's recruitment in this last six, seven years has been led by managers' philosophies, not by the club's philosophy. And that's a big problem. I think that's an absolutely fantastic point from Gary. And I think if you look back at the signings that we've made in the last four, five, six years, you can really see that's the case. Let's start with David Moyes. He signed Mauro and Fellaini. That wasn't the club. That wasn't a United-type signing. That was Moyes getting Fellaini on deadline day because he ballsed up and couldn't sign Fabregas. That was a Moyes signing. Matter, a brilliant signing, a very United signing, but a desperate signing. In January, when things weren't going well, oh, let's just spend 40 million on a Chelsea player. Maybe he can solve our problems. Wasn't bought for the right reasons, but ended up being a good signing. And then if you look at Louis van Gaal, we've got a list here of all the transfers that he made. Di Maria was never ever a van Gaal signing, a dribbler, an eccentric player under Van Gaal, that was never going to work. Di Maria was more of a United signing, but under the wrong manager. And you've got Luke Shaw, I think that was a right signing. A young, exciting prospect with the ability to grow and become into a world-class star. That's more of a United signing. You've got Ander Herrera, again I think that was a good signing. He shined against us when he played for Bill Bow and then we went and signed him. Good one, I'm happy with Herrera. Rojo, I'm not sure Rojo was ever really good enough for Manchester United, if I'm being perfectly honest. You've got Daley Blind, I think that was a good signing, a sort of like Dutch John O'Shea type signing, I suppose. I'm happy with Blind, I think Blind was a good signing, and I think, you know, if he was at the club now, he probably could still do a job. Falcao was a gamble which really didn't work out for Manchester United. I really wish it did, but it didn't. Um, then you've got the next season, you've got Anthony Martial, probably out of all of the signings that we've made over the last four or five years, I'd say Martial was probably being the best one. We spotted Martial, so maybe the scouting network isn't as terrible as I'm saying it is. But Martial, an absolute success. Schneidlin and Schweinsteiger. Schneidlin at the time, I think, was one of the best central midfielders in the league, so I could understand that. But it felt like the wrong manager, I suppose, for Schneidlin and Schweinsteiger. Schweinsteiger, was in, like Falcao, was a gamble that didn't pay off. But I'm really surprised that Schneidlin didn't work out, and maybe that's because, again, it was under the wrong manager. Memphis Depay. I put him in the same category as Di Maria, the right sort of signing for Manchester United, the wrong manager to get the most out of him. And Luke Shaw's injury didn't help Memphis either because their partnership down the left was brilliant until Shaw's injury. And you got Darmian and Romero. Darmian, I think United could have got a better right back had their scouting network been a little bit better or they looked elsewhere, but that's my own opinion. And Romero, I don't think you can argue, I think Romero's been excellent. And then we go on to Mourinho's signings. Paul Pogba. Absolutely right player for Manchester United, never should have left Manchester United. Question marks over whether it was the right manager or not. Mkhitaryan, I think again, Mkhitaryan was a brilliant signing. Wrong manager. Eric Bai, excellent signing, good scouting network there. Ibrahimovic, I think arguably he was Mourinho's best signing. 
you know, certainly in that first year, he was instrumental in us winning the Europa League and the League Cup as well. Then you got Lukaku. Question marks over whether Lukaku was or is ever a United type player. That's really up for debate as far as I'm concerned. I, I think that was more of a Mourinho type signing, which is the point that Neville was trying to make out there. Nemanja Matic, absolutely a Mourinho type signing rather than a United type signing. And I would say, even though he's brilliant in his first year, I would say Matic probably the wrong signing for United. I don't think that has been too successful. As far as I'm concerned anyway, you might disagree. Lindelof, I think put that in the same category as Bay. Excellent signing, wrong manager. Sanchez, you can put Sanchez in the same sort of category as Van Persie, but wrong manager. Fred, excellent player, wrong manager. Delot, I think that's a good signing. I still think we're going to see a lot from Delot in the future. And Lee Grant, a very random signing, but that allowed Joel Pereira to go out on loan. So if you look at that in total, I think that's 25 transfers that Manchester United have made since Fergie retired. Only a handful really have been massively successful and quite a lot of them haven't been. So I think Neville's right in that whatever happens now, either in January or next summer as well, the signings have to be done according to the values of the club first. If they meet those and they've got the right manager in place, it should all be seamless. And it means that whoever comes in now and next and whoever follows the next manager in won't come into a squad that's been crafted and created by three or four managers in three or four different styles it will all be United signings and they will all be on the same wavelength so that whoever replaces the next manager will be on a much better playing field. So Neville is right to point that out. And the next point that Neville makes, and he's very, very <laughs> clear on this, is that he wants the emotion to be taken out of the appointment of our next manager. It's not, it's not about sort of, we, we've got to take emotion out of it at Manchester United. Oh, get him back, get him. No, get the best people who have run the best clubs in the world and do it properly this time. Reset properly with a coach that meets the values of Manchester United. Not that doesn't meet the values. Not that doesn't meet the values. My point is, I think at this moment in time, I can see where an interim appointment for the next six months is someone that brings favour and goodwill. And to be honest with you, he absolutely would fit into that category. Now, Solskjaer has been very successful early on, and he was brought in, I would argue, just because of emotion. But that was at the right time for the club. United just needed a manager to come in, ride the wave, bring the good feeling back, like Neville points out there, and it's exactly what Solskjaer has done. And United do need to make sure that whoever comes in in the summer comes in because they are the right manager, not because of an emotion or anything else in between. The only reason Unai Emery is successful at Arsenal is because Arsenal did the right interview process and realised that he was the right man after looking at all candidates. Fergie gave Moyes a job, basically, when he retired. That was wrong. Van Gaal was brought in because we needed an experienced head. He, he had taken Netherlands to the World Cup when nobody thought they would be there. Didn't work out. We ballsed up twice. We went to Mourinho. That didn't work out. So whoever comes in next has to be for the right reasons. And if, if Poch was to come in, I think that would be a very good appointment. But the way Solskjaer is going so far, maybe he'll get the job. And it was really interesting to hear what Neville had to say about Pochettino as well and whether or not joining United would be a good opportunity for him. I think it's the... Maybe it is bias. Maybe it's because sort of I've grown up. Given the way they've gone through managers since Sir Alex left, Unless things change, is it as attractive as yeah. a proposition yeah. as it once was? Yeah. Yeah. I, Jose Mourinho came to Manchester United. I, I, to me, of course, you could argue that if you got offered Bayern Munich, Real Madrid or That's what I'm saying. Barcelona, those three clubs at this moment in time, and to be fair, you know, Manchester City and Liverpool have got managers who aren't going to be coming out of there anytime soon because they're, they're, they're wedded in. Sure. But in terms of Manchester United as an attraction, absolutely it's an attraction. What an opportunity. What an opportunity. I mean, obviously, it would be a big opportunity for Pochettino. You know, no offence to Spurs, but United and Spurs, as the size of the clubs, are on completely different levels. You know, Pochettino has been vocal recently about his frustration and saying, look, if Spurs want to win titles, they've got to match the ambition of other clubs and spend money. Spurs were the only club this summer to not sign a player, the first club ever, I think, in the Premier League since like 2003, to not sign a single player. Pochettino is a great manager who's got a hell of a lot out of a great squad, but he's made that good squad great. It wasn't great when he arrived, it's great because of him. 
And that's why United fans like Pochettino so much. So, of course, United would be a huge opportunity, but it depends on Pochettino's loyalty to Spurs and whether or not United do want him by the end of the season. Because if Solskjaer goes on to win the Champions League, then you can't really argue against Solskjaer getting it. But I don't think we're going to win the Champions League. Little caveat there. Moving on, Neville also touches on United's squad and the quality that it has. To be honest with you, there's a core of a good squad there and a lot of talent. I mean, I look at the front five of Lukaku, Martial, Rashford, Sanchez, Mata. Wow. If you could get those two or three playing together up front in any combination, there should be 60, 70 goals there. If you get, those, if you get three of those five at it, the 60, 70, 80 goals in any league. So there's an opportunity here to actually create something special. In midfield, I think we need people who control the game and can get hold of the ball and can take the ball in the half turn. I think we're short in midfield at Manchester United. I think defensively, there's no doubt we're short. You know, the back four at this moment in time doesn't resemble the back four. There needs to be a couple of additions in the back four that are really good additions. I've been saying this all along, that this United squad is better than most people really give it credit for. That attack really can challenge for the Premier League. It's just that the defence and the midfield at the moment aren't good enough to challenge with it. And Neville's right there. We do need more ball-playing central midfielders who can control on the half turn, control the tempo of the game. And we do need at least two top draw signings in defence. I always keep saying it. But Alisson and Van Dijk completely transformed that Liverpool team because they already had a wicked attack. The midfield was already quite strong as well. But having those two defensive signings solidified the whole team throughout. That's exactly what United need to do. So Neville, again, spot on there with the signings that United need to make and how the core squad itself is still very, very good. Now, to finish, Neville was asked about the importance of getting this next managerial appointment right. And I think he made some really crucial points here. There's two big jobs in the next six months. It's to plan for the next permanent manager of the club and get the absolute right candidate that I think meets the principles and values of United, which is entertaining football, promoting youth players and winning. So they're the three values and you've got to fit those categories. Let's stick to that because it works. It's worked for 70, 80 years, so let's not move away from it. And then the next one is they have to make sure that he's got the platform to succeed behind him. What you can't do is keep changing the conductor at the front of the orchestra. The orchestra's not right, because it'll still play bad music. Don't keep, changing the con don't keep changing the conductor. Do something in here as well in the pit. Do something in the production. Change a little bit around it. Restructure it. Make sure that the conductor is set up to succeed. The manager's the most important person in a football club. Make no mistake about that. That might not seem to be sort of... It is. Football clubs are about performance. High levels of performance and making sure you win. That is it. That is the basis of any football club. When it stops being about that, then to be honest with you, you are absolutely finished. And there's a suggestion at Manchester United they think more about the brand and about the commercial. They've got to put football back at the heart of the club. And that means they get the best coach possible and they get that coach at whatever cost because he's the most important individual in that club. He sets the culture, the mentality for everything that goes through the club. I personally think this managerial appointment is the most important United have made since replacing Fergie. And we fucked that up so, so bad that we can't afford to make that mistake again. We're now at a crossroads, a really dangerous crossroads, because we've always laughed at Liverpool for not winning the league ever, or the Premier League. But if United get this appointment wrong, if United don't fix the structure of the club, we're already in a down, we already were in a downward spiral. But recovering from another downward spiral on top of that would be so, so hard. So what happens in the next five, six years has to be an upward spiral. And that comes with restructuring. And I really, really like the point that Neville makes about the manager being the architect of the culture at the club. We had David Moyes, a man who wasn't, he wasn't fit to manage the players he was managing. Champions League winners, Premier League winners. It's David Moyes. The respect was never there between the players and the manager. That was a terrible appointment. Van Howe, a stubborn man, philosophically driven completely and not everyone agreed with it and that caused division it didn't work out Mourinho a man who we all know his managerial style if you didn't get on that siege battle bus you wouldn't be part of the team and again that didn't work out and they have been the cultures of the club that we've seen Solskjaer has come in now 
And all of a sudden the good feeling is back because the culture feels right. It feels like United. And it's not just because we've got Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, an ex-player in charge, it's because of the players that we're seeing with smiles on their faces, expressive football. That is United. We, we have played entertaining football for the large part of the last 20, 30 years. We certainly haven't in the last five. And refinding that identity and redefining that culture with the managerial appointment is crucial. And Neville is right. The manager is the most important person at a football club. He controls everything. He controls the direction that the football club is taken. Now, the direction's been completely wrong for years. Whoever comes in next has to make sure that direction is exactly where the club wants it to go and that we don't let the manager drive our decisions as a football club. So I think in this interview, Neville's made plenty of really, really good points. I want to know from you in the comments now what you feel is needed to fix Manchester United's problems from here on in. Solskjaer's been a brilliant start. Five wins from five, nobody can argue against that. But we're looking at the larger, longer picture. Let me know what you think, you know, about transfers, the structure of the club, the right manager, everything, the culture that Neville has talked about there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, if you are new to United People's TV and you're still here, congratulations. Make sure you subscribe now, get involved and be part of the community. But until next time, take it easy.